Well, it's great to see all of you here tonight, and I'm going to ask Sandra and Howard and Ken if you'll take a microphone and be, uh, be the guide out there uh, on any questions that any of you want to ask. I, I want to mention something that uh, I have uh, hesitated in bringing up in the study because I don't have the answer to it. Uh, nor have I found any other book that I've been reading that has the answer to this. But in the book of Isaiah, there are lots of chapters that deal with the millennial kingdom, the thousand-year reign. Now, Isaiah speaks about, in Isaiah chapter 65, I believe it's verse 20, somewhere thereabout, how that longevity will be a part of that thousand-year reign. People will live to be older, and it speaks about uh, that uh, even when someone dies at the age of 100, uh, they'll still be considered a youth, young. Now, my question is this, and I've looked at many of the commentaries, and they skip right over what uh, verse I want them to explain. So I'm assuming that they don't know any more about that than I know. Uh, and I have lots of commentaries and lots of different uh, Bibles uh, out there. The only one that I found anything that somewhat satisfied uh, my curiosity, and you know, curious minds want to know. But if during the days of the thousand-year reign, Satan will be bound... Therefore, those that come out of the tribulation in their natural bodies, uh, they made it through, and they will have children, and those people will grow up. Uh, now, while Satan is bound, uh, sin obviously is still present within the human heart, especially of those that will be uh, born during that period of time. Now, according to Scripture, uh, those people are also, uh, many of them are going to die. Now, my question is this, and for all of you Bible students and scholars out there, uh, please help your pastor understand if you have an answer to this. If Jesus is in the thousand-year reign, and he is and will be, and if when you die in this life and you know Christ, before that thousand-year reign someday, your spirit goes to God who gave it. You're in the presence of Jesus. Now, if Jesus is present in the thousand-year reign and you die, where's your spirit going? If any of you can find the answer to that, you're doing far better than I'm doing. One thing Tony Evans says in his commentary on one of those footnotes is that the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And so when Satan is released at the end of the thousand years and those that were born have to choose whether or not they accept Christ or whether or not they follow him, uh, then, uh, of course, Satan will be thrown into the lake of fire and those that follow after him. But my question, and it's just a question that has uh, tickled my mind for many years in studying this, what happens to those that die? Where's their spirit? If Jesus is there, where is then their spirit? So if any of you know the answer to that, would you tell me later? Now, before we begin tonight, does anybody have a question thus far that you want to ask if we have the answer or think we have the answer? Because what I've found with many of these uh, particular uh, various people in the camp that we've studied, and by the way, uh, in the dispensation of time that you and I talk about, the historical uh, view was that uh, historically, uh, the premillennial view uh, in the early days, the historical view of that 
was that uh, uh, Israel and the church, you know, those two where some want to join those together. But the pre-millennial dispensational group that I agree with on that, Israel, the church, they're separate. There, there's a, God has his program for the church. God has his program for the nation of Israel. Does anybody have a question tonight? Yes, right over here, Kenny. So who's there? All right, Howard, yeah, if you'll grab Kenny there. Kenny, speak right into it so everybody can hear. Okay. I, it says here, uh, Satan cast down to earth. So my question is, is Satan in heaven or is he on earth now? Or Sa Satan, where is is, he? Satan is the prince of the power of the air. But as I understand scripture, and which is very hard, Kenny, for you and I to comprehend this in our finite minds, he still has limited access, as I understand it, into the presence of God where he accuses the brethren. And so it's limited access, whatever that refers to and how much of uh, his presence is there at times. But I know this, Jesus died for our sins. So when we are being accused by Satan, uh, Jesus can say to the Father, I paid for his sins. He belongs to me. Now, he will be cast out for good when we, in those various chapters that we studied in the book of Revelation. Now, beyond that, Kenny, I can't really explain that. Okay? Anybody else have a question? Comment? All right, Marilyn. We learned that um, the Old Testament saints would be invited to the Lord, the supper, wedding supper. And I just don't know why are they not in the rapture? Okay, uh, Marilyn asked the question. It's a good question. The Old Testament where are the Old Testament saints? Well, I believe that their spirit is with God. Now, I believe that their body will be resurrected at the end of the tribulation, and they will then uh, be a part of the wedding celebration as they are referred to as part of the wedding guest, John the Baptist. Even though we read about John the Baptist in the New Testament, John the Baptist is the last of the Old Testament prophets. But the Bible says that John the Baptist is a friend of the bridegroom. And so the friends of the bridegroom are going to be uh, invited to the wedding ceremony. Now, Marilyn, back to your statement there. To, de to definitively uh, answer that, I think, I think I would, and once again, based on things I've read, in the Old Testament, someone wrote me an email this week and said, how did people in the Old Testament get saved? How do people in the New Testament times get saved? In the Old Testament, it was imputed to them the righteousness of Christ looking into the future when Jesus, the Messiah, the promised Messiah from Genesis all the way through the Old Testament was going to come. And by faith, they believed that they received that, they accepted that as a guarantee that the Messiah was coming and they were saved the same way we get saved these past 2,000 years during New Testament times, the New Testament age of grace. We get saved by looking back to the cross 2,000 years ago. 
We weren't there 2,000 years ago. So how do we get saved? By faith through God's wonderful grace, his gift of grace. In the Old Testament, when people died, they went to, there was the place called Hades, or the grave, or the realm of the dead. And in that was those that looked by faith to the cross when Christ would come, they would be in a temporary place of comfort and peace, whereas those that were the wicked, unsaved, they would be in a temporary holding place of torment and punishment. In the New Testament, when if you'll remember Lazarus and the rich man. And the rich man was in hell and looked up in Father Abraham's bosom and wanted Lazarus to come and dip his tongue in water to quench the burning and the torment that was going on. And the Bible says there's a great gulf fixed that Lazarus couldn't go to him, he couldn't go to Lazarus. And the man in hell said, I have five brothers that need to to be witnessed to, in other words, okay? I'm just giving the story in paraphrase. And so he did not want them to come there. Now, I don't know what Ken's got planned for Easter Sunday morning as far as hymns, but many times throughout the years, Christ the Lord is risen today. has been a song. Are we singing that, Ken? Good. Uh, that song, when it says, he has opened paradise, a lot of people see that as Christ, what what happened on Friday uh, when Christ was put into the tomb, Saturday, silent Saturday, Sunday morning, uh, he resurrects from the tomb, Lots of Bible commentators say that Christ went and descended into the lower parts to preach to those that were in prison and that he opened paradise and took them with him uh, to heaven, uh, those that were saved. When Jesus said to the thief on the cross, today you'll be with me in paradise. And so the question Marilyn asked is, what happens to the Old Testament? Some of the people in this same camp that I've been teaching from believe that both the Old and the New Testament saints are represented in the book of Revelation by the uh, 24 elders, the uh, apostles and uh, the prophets of, of old. Uh, so, you know, my, my deal is, my thinking is this. I think their spirit is with the Lord. I know that they're going to be resurrected at the end of the tribulation, just like your loved ones that die in Christ, where are they? Someone called me the other day to ask me where their loved one was that knew Christ that had passed. My answer to that is they're in the presence of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says their spirit returned to God who gave it. So they're in the presence of Jesus. Where are the saved tonight? They're in the presence of the Lord Jesus. Now, if you'll remember, there are various stages of the resurrection. Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection, right? Jesus resurrected on that day. First Sunday, Easter Sunday morning. And uh, so that's why we as Christians worship on Sunday. Because uh, after the resurrection. And so the question is, Jesus is the first fruit of the resurrection. Okay? Now then, when the rapture takes place, Paul spoke about it in Corinthians, Thessalonians. When 
the dead in Christ. The phrase in Christ is hugely important. Someone asked the question in one of the uh, commentaries that I read, uh, will the Old Testament saints be raptured uh, when the church is raptured, not according to the way I understand the scripture and others that interpret it the same way, the dead in Christ. Okay, Christ came. We are living in New Testament times. So the dead in Christ, the rapture, I believe is for the saved in the church age for the past 2,000 years when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost and indwelled the believer. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came and moved at various times and in various ways upon the people. But since the day of Pentecost, when Jesus was ascending back to heaven, he told those disciples to wait till the promise comes. The promise would come 10 days later after Christ ascended to heaven, and the promise is the Holy Spirit that would indwell every person from the time of Pentecost until Jesus resurrects and raptures his church. Now, those that are dead in Christ will be changed into a spiritual resurrected body like Jesus said. It was recognizable. They will know each other. Jesus was able to eat with his disciples along the seashore after the resurrection. They could see the nail prints in his hand, his scar riven side. And so that's what our immortal Bodies will someday be like, we will be like him. The Bible says, for we shall see him as he is. Now, in the last 2,000 years, we are living in the church age. And the church, according to the Bible, is the bride of Christ. The church. So those Old Testament saints are not in the church age. They're in that Old Testament dispensation of time. Saved, yes, but they're not in the church age. They will be a part of the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, there are differences of opinions among these biblical scholars of prophecy about do the 24 elders that fall down, remember in the book of Revelation, they fall down with their, their crown, they're robed, and they fall down to worship. Some of these Bible scholars say that that is representative of both the Old Testament and the New Testament, okay? But we are told specifically about these resurrections. Christ is the first fruit of the resurrections, then the next stage of the resurrection, still in the first resurrection, Jesus spoke about, be sure you're in the first resurrection because it's for all the people that are saved, okay? So Jesus first. The next stage will be those that have died in Christ when they are resurrected to be ready to go into the rapture. The Bible says those of us that are alive, when that happens, we're still in our natural bodies, so we've got to be changed out of this body for our heavenly, eternal body, okay? The Bible says flesh and blood cannot enter into heaven. The Bible says flesh and bone can, okay? So through the bloodline, we are all sinners. So flesh and blood will not enter into heaven, but flesh and bone will. So in, if you looked at this aisle here, we've had, when Daniel was given the dream to 
for the days that were decreed till the end of the age was a 70-week period of time. And each of those weeks stood for years. And so they were seven years. So seven times 70 weeks is 490 weeks of years that would be decreed upon uh, the nation of Israel from the time of the Babylonian captivity with Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel and all of them. There would be 490 years till the end of the age. 69 of those 70 weeks has already passed history. If I took your side of the sanctuary, this aisle right here, all the way that away, that would be the 69 weeks of Daniel's prophecy that's already passed. It's already been fulfilled. There is a pause from the last week of years. The 70th week will be seven more years, okay? That will be the tribulation. But there's a pause between the 69 weeks of years that have already passed and the years that begin the tribulation. That pause would be like this center aisle before you would start the seven years of the tribulation. What is that pause? What is that interruption? What's that interlude? It's called the church age. It's the age of grace. When Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday 2,000 years ago, he came unto his own, but his own didn't receive him. They rejected him. So Jesus turned to the Gentiles, anyone that wasn't Jewish. So we've been living in the times of the Gentiles. Okay? So we're living in this church age for 2,000 years. Since the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. The promise came to indwell the believer. Remember Jesus told those disciples, if I don't go away, the promise won't come. If I don't go away, you won't be able to do all of the many things that you can do beyond what I did because Jesus, in his earthly body as human, was only one person that could only be in one place at a time. Jesus said, I'm going away, but when I go away, you're going to be able to do a whole lot more than what I've done, meaning that everybody that was saved, the Holy Spirit would move them and lead them out there. Okay, so Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection. It's the first resurrection. The dead in Christ, at the rapture will be the second phase of the first resurrection. They're saved. They're a part of the first resurrection. The first resurrection will be for all the saved. Okay? Then we go through this 70th week of Daniel, which is going to be the days of the tribulation when the church is no longer here. We're going to be wed to the bridegroom. And so, this 70th week of Daniel, there are going to be people, the nation of Israel, there are going to be a third, as I understand the Bible, a third of the Jewish people that will be saved. They will be what is the remnant of Israel. When the Bible says, and all Israel will be saved, that's what it's speaking of. All of the Jews that will be saved. It doesn't mean that every Jew is going to be saved just like every Gentile is not going to be saved. And so, in the tribulation, all of those that are saved, those that die during that seven years, because of the word of their testimony, and they didn't take the mark of the beast, and they're going to be saved, those that die will be in, uh, th those will also be resurrected. 
they will be another phase of the first resurrection. So in other words, if you're in the first resurrection, Jesus is the first phase of it. The rapture, the dead in Christ and those alive will be, uh, that are changed, will be in the second phase of the first resurrection. In other words, the resurrection is going to be in stages for various ones. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, then at the end of the tribulation, those Old Testament saints are going to be resurrected. Now, does that mean that their spirit is going to come back when we come back and that body is going to be joined with that spirit? Hey, I think that's up for grabs on the interpretation of what different ones believe about that. I can't definitively uh, give you an answer to that. I just know that, that uh, he has it all worked out. But the resurrection, the first resurrection deals with all of the resurrections of the saved. But they come at different times. Christ was resurrected 2,000 years ago. The dead in Christ for 2,000 years, are their body is still in the grave. Their spirit is in the presence of Jesus. But when their body is resurrected and they're joined with their spirit, for all eternity, that's another resurrection, but it's part of the first resurrection because they are in Christ. The tribulation saints that die will be in that third stage of the first resurrection because they're saved. Now, when the Bible speaks about the second death, it's referring to the lost. You don't want to be in that great white throne judgment resurrection there. That's for all of the lost dead of all of the ages of the world. Did I answer your question, Marilyn? I, I mean, I kind of went through Rome and Paris and London to get there. But, but, I, but it's complicated. It, it's somewhat complex uh, to kind of untangle all of that, where you understand the first resurrection. When you make a cake, you don't just dump all the ingredients at one time, right? Uh, I probably would, but I know you wouldn't, Marilyn. So you do it in stages. And so the resurrection's going to be in stages. Christ, the first fruits, 2,000 years ago. The church, the dead in Christ, Whenever that happens, it's already been 2,000 years, but when it happens, that'll be a, a second stage of the first resurrection in Christ. Tribulation saints uh, that die, that will be a third stage of the first resurrection. They're all saved. They're going to all be with Jesus. The Old Testament saved are going to all be with Jesus. Their bodies are going to be raised at the end of the tribulation and the tribulation saints, according to the book of Revelation. I think a lot of people get very misunderstood about some of those things. And the reason that I have been so intently focused on trying to untangle this as much as possible is because I have to understand it in order to to get it across. Any of you ever have a teacher in high school, college? They rambled on and on, you never got it. Any of y'all ever had any of those? Uh, uh, it, yeah, and I had, I had quite a lot of them I didn't get. And so, you know, if you don't get us like a little kid one day in my English class, we were conjugating verbs, and the verb was rip. So it'd be rip, ripped, E-D, ripped, E-D. The little kid got up and he said, rip, tear, split. That's it. Rip, tear, split. Well, you know, he didn't understand it. So uh, I've tried to be able to uh, give you as much of a visual picture of, of, of this uh, so that you understand. If I don't understand it, I'm normally not going to bring it up. 
but I brought it up tonight on the question I have that I don't have an answer to and everything I've looked up, nobody has an answer to. They tell you that yes, people will die during the millennial reign, but they don't tell you when all of that's going to change. I mean, if they're going to die, where's their spirit? Jesus is there. So, uh, even among the greatest of the greats, if you will, they don't explain all that. Tom. Tom, here you go. Howard's got a mic for you. There it I is. I've got people listening, Tom, so speak into it. I have an observation as much as a question. Uh, today, a Jew cannot enter the Temple Mount. Right. The Jews have given that authority up to the Muslim faith. Right. Uh, but I know that uh, the Dome of the Rock was not built during Jesus' time because the temple still existed. Right. Now, I don't know exactly when the, temple, when the, uh, the Dome of the Rock was, was built, and it's just beyond me to believe that the Jews voluntarily gave up authority to the Temple Mount. That's amazing to me that that would happen. Yeah, absolutely, but... They did. Jim, do you know anything about that part on the uh, Dome of the Rock? It wasn't there when Jesus was there because the temple was there. But once the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, which would have been Herod's temple, uh, then w do you know when the Dome of the Rock was placed there? No, I don't. Yeah, and, and so, yeah, Tom, I, I agree with you. It's hard to comprehend how they would allow that to happen. I know it, I know it had to happen uh, in, after 19, 1948 uh, when, they, when they took back the Temple Mount, but then they, at a later time they had gave up the authority to the Muslim faith. Uh, and to, even today, a Jew cannot enter the Temple Mount area. Right. A, uh, a visitor can, a tourist can, but not a Jew. Right. Absolutely. Good, good observation. Thank you for that, Tom. Yes, Chuck. Go ahead. So I uh, turn to our old friend Google. Oh, okay. Uh, Brent, I'm having a hard time hearing can, them. Can you hear me? Can you put them through this monitor? Is that possible? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you, but, but it's garbled. Okay, go ahead, Chuck. So I Googled it, and the Dome of the Rock was built in the late 7th century. It was when, built when? In the late 7th century. S when the, the late 7th century, 700 the, A.D. after, okay, when, Christ? When the Arabs had control of the area. Okay, when the Arabs had control of the city. Okay, okay. Jim. Yeah, just a, a note. Uh, at the end of the Six-Day War... In a, 1967, June the yes, 6th? Yes. yes. There was an Israeli captain that was wiring the Dome of the Rock with dynamite, was going to blow it up, but one of the generals stopped him, and that's how we still have the Dome of the Rock. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Jim, for that observation. Uh, I know Amir Serfati, uh, who uh, has a broadcast on weekly. I listened to Amir yesterday, and, and he was really saying that if the nation of Israel ever needed prayer, they needed prayer now. It's in a dire situation. I know there has been some legislation that they've been greatly worried about that uh, they were trying to pass a law, the Knesset, I suppose it is. That's their like our Congress and all, uh, they are, uh, we're going to try to get past a bill, a law that Christians could not try to proselyte a Jew to Christianity. It was going to be a crime issue. Now, Amir Sarfati said that isn't going to happen. That isn't going to get passed. And I heard uh, Bibi Netanyahu, uh, I heard him say that that was not going to pass. 
he was going to block that. But you and I are living right now, and we won't get to this tonight, but I want to tell you, I listened to a broadcast today of some prophecy uh, teachers, uh, and I'll tell you, the scary things that are out there, and even the Elon Musk, uh, even Bill Gates, some of these people have acknowledged that this AI, artificial intelligence, okay, y'all know what that means, artificial intelligence, these robots that are being built to take the place of human labor, et cetera, et cetera, that it is unbelievable how scary that is and how I read today in seven years that it is being predicted that mankind will have achieved his immortality. I laughed when I read it. I thought, gee, the Bible says God laughs in the heavens. Once again, Man trying to play God, trying to play the role of God. Another thing on this chat bot, and I don't know a lot about it, but some of you probably do, chat, C-H-A-T, and capital G, capital P, capital T. This is a huge deal. This is an information system that knows everything. You can ask it to do something, and within seconds, it spills out the whole information. So, uh, somebody asks it to do a sermon on some particular thing from the Bible, and within two or three seconds, the whole outline was there. But the thing about the artificial intelligence issue is the fact that they are worried that the AI, the artificial intelligence, will overpower mankind, and they don't know what that it will do. So, for those who are skeptics in the world tonight about are we living in end times, we are certainly, I believe, living in end times, because I'll tell you, 50 years ago, they weren't using drones, and they weren't talk, talking about chatbot, and they weren't talking about TikTok, and they weren't talking about hopscotch. No, I just threw that out there to see if you're still awake. Some of you are, and some of you aren't. But they weren't talking, maybe, maybe it was out there about aliens, and maybe it was out there about the alien mothership, and, and uh, artificial intelligence, and robots, and all of these things, let me tell you folks, if we aren't living in the latter part of time, I don't know that I will ever get it or understand it because these are things, information is exploding so exponentially over weeks that it's unbelievable what's happening in the field of technology and artificial intelligence, and robots, and all of these things, which would lead you to think if some of this, in the book of Revelation, will some of these armies be artificial intelligence? Is that why there would be so many of them created? I don't know. You know, what about all of the alien situation now that's out there everywhere, among NASA and the Pentagon, and the military, and all of the, these kinds of things. Well, I happen to believe along with all of many of these Bible prophecy teachers, I believe those are demonic spirits. I don't think it's people from another planet. I think it's the demonic spirits that are out there roaming the world doing the things that they're doing. So all of the things that you and I are seeing, the things now with Russia China, Iran, North Korea, uh, all of this that's going on, even Saudi Arabia maybe, and all of these things that are taking place out there. Let me tell you, people better be, people better be alert. People better be ready to meet the Lord because the Bible says no one knows the day or the hour. 
But let me tell you, we are seeing things in the, this day and time since, since May of 1948 when the Jews started coming home to their homeland. The Bible says that they would be a nation born in one day, and they were. Four o'clock in the evening on May the, of 1948, they became a nation. And then there was the Six-Day War that Jimmy mentioned a few moments ago on June the 6th, 1967, where they recaptured the city of Jerusalem. And then there was the Yom Kippur uh, situation, I believe, in 1973, as I understand that. And with all of the flurry of what's happening in the nation of Israel as of this week, uh, we're seeing things that no other generation has experienced or witnessed. Does anyone else have a question or an observation tonight? Yes, Sandra. What I was wondering was on uh, chapter 6 on verse 9 and of the uh, souls that are under the altar. altar. Those yes. are souls that are, they are martyred during the tribulation. Okay, so they're in the third stage of the, they're in the third well, stage Well, they are, then. they are killed during the tribulation. Mm -hmm. They're raptured up to heaven. The Bible says those souls are crying out under the altar. What they are doing is they're saying, oh, sovereign Lord, how long is it going to be before you bring judgment on those that have martyred us? That's what okay. that's referring to. But yes, they're saved. They were killed for their testimony. And they are raptured into the presence of the Lord. Okay, I'm trying to get the stages, and I guess it's kind of hard to get the well, stages. Well, the tribulation you... saints, the tribulation saints will be resurrected, their bodies, at the end of the seven-year tribulation. Okay. And so will the Old Testament saints' bodies okay. be resurrected. But all of those will be a part of the first resurrection because they're all saved, just all in saved. different stages. Okay, thank you. You bet. Anybody else before we go? Well, Sunday night we'll pick up with the new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem, and it's fascinating, and I'm confident of the fact that whenever we come up with questions that we cannot find answers to, I'm confident of the fact that we're not supposed to understand everything. Amen. And so if we don't understand everything, it's okay. It's okay. Just inquiring minds want to know, and we can always understand everything. And so could Daniel understand 2,500, 3,000 years? Could Daniel understand what you and I understand tonight about this? Absolutely not. Did John understand even though he's writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, John could not even imagine. He tried to describe what he saw in this, as he was given this vision of end time events. John is trying to describe as best he can in terminology that he can for us to grasp what we can. There are things, I'm sure, that when it's all said and all done, that many of the Bible scholars, we will have probably missed some salient issues here and salient points there. But his copious notes through the Holy Spirit from the vision that he was given certainly lends the veracity to you and me tonight to know that all of this is going to, as many have used through the years the terminology it's going to all pan out it's going to all pan out and many of those prophecy scholars what they don't understand they know it's going to pan out in the end so what you and I can understand what we can grasp uh, I think it's very vital information in this day and in this time.
for you and I to be aware of what's going on. God bless you. What a great study tonight. I like it. I don't know about you. I like uh, Sunday night and Wednesday night. They're more informal. Uh, I feel good about question and answers and observations and comments, and it makes it a lot more interesting, uh, I think, to you and to me as well. God bless you for being here tonight. Would you stand as we pray together? Ken's going to come and lead us in a song. If someone needs to come and make a decision this evening, uh, you just pray that uh, the Holy Spirit would speak to their heart. Thank you to those of you that took the uh, microphones, and thank you for all of you that commented tonight with your questions. Father, bless us now as we go into this time of invitation. If someone needs to move, Holy Spirit, move them, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.